Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining DRW. I'm your host, Brandon Macy, and I'm glad to have with me my longtime friend, uh, ex-brother-in-law, Mike Prieto, man. Thank you for coming and taking the time to be on the podcast today. Thank you for inviting me, and uh, Uncle B. As, yeah. as my kids still yeah. call you. Yeah, well, and you still yeah. call me Uncle B. I still Uncle call B. you Uncle B. You know, um, we've got an interesting history because, you know, both of us go to church together right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was married to your sister at one time and for eight years. So it was a while. Yeah. And and I've been divorced uh, now for almost eight years. It's hard to believe that it's been that wow. long. But... Yeah. Uh, I want to say to you, and I I know that me and you have talked a lot outside this podcast, but I want to say, you know, I'm thankful for your friendship. I do feel like we're friends, even though we don't hang Mm -hmm. out all the time. I'm able to come over for some cooking and burgers every once in a while. As long as my boys are involved, I feel like that's the real, (laughs) that's the real draw. Yeah, that's what gets you there. (laughs) But I I appreciate that, that you and I have that friendship. And I just want to tell you, from a man standpoint that uh not to get into things too deep here right away mm-hmm. but i really do appreciate um your forgiveness because you know it's a tough thing just being family with family right but when you have family that's that's not your blood family like like you and mm-hmm. i are and you go through a rough time go through a divorce and for you and I to be able to sit at the table together, for us to have conversations outside of this, talk on the phone here and there, uh, still invite me to the house and, and all that kind of stuff. I want to tell you that I appreciate that. And to me, uh, I, I look up to that, that you are able to be man enough to do that. And, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, you went. You went heavy right off the bat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll lighten this up in a minute. Yeah, we'll we'll laugh later. No, but I, and I and I've uh, I've always said uh, you were very instrumental. Uh, well, when I when I first moved to Houston, actually, time I wasn't even moving here. I was just coming to 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 get away from some stuff, and um, uh, just extremely instrumental in 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 my rebirth, if you will. You know, getting yeah. back in church, and so I think at the end of the day, I always fall back on that. Um, you know, of course, and, you know, just, just God's direction on, you know, forgiveness and all that. And, um, I'm a huge, huge, you know, huge with that. So, um, it goes without saying, you know, it, with the nephews and stuff involved and and outside of that, there's, you know, your family, your family. So sure. Well, I appreciate that. And I, you know, the, the crazy thing is, is, is I remember when Jackie and I were dating and, uh, I think we were dating when you were split up. I don't think we were quite married yet, right? Is that is that right? Am I right no, on no, that? No, no, I was I was actually still married. Uh because I remember I uh, I I couldn't be in your wedding. That's with, right. With, with my ex-wife That's right. because uh Jackie, my sister was going to put me with one of my ex-girlfriends. That's and, right. And uh, I ended up That's having right. to go out of town and uh and try to uh, make peace I remember with, with that. the marriage that still ended, but anyway. I, I remember that. <laughs> but I you know the crazy thing was is I remember being there, you know, I think uh, after we were married then is when all that kind of went down. And I remember being there with you through you going through all that, Mm -hmm. watching you split time with Ethan, uh, not knowing what my future was going to be and and, and not knowing that, I mean, I don't think you ever get married thinking I'm going to be divorced at some point. And, you know, the, the thing that I appreciate is through the, through the mistakes that I made, through, you know, the things that I did wrong, that you still supported, uh, you know, decisions that I made after that. I, I would like to think I've, I've made good decisions after that, <laughs> finally, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I've talked about it on this podcast of the bad decisions that I've made in my life. And we've, we've been together through you making bad decisions, through me making bad decisions, and I tell people all the time that, you know, living for God is not always a straight shot. I, mm-hmm. I wish it was. I wish I could tell you that I started on this road with God and me and him just never did each other wrong. He never did me wrong. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely times that I made mistakes, uh, big ones. And, and you know, it, it's just been 
it's been crazy seeing what's happened in your life. I know that for you, it's it's been crazy to see what's happened in my life, but I appreciate the fact <laughs> that through all of that, you and I are still able to be friends, still able to be amicable, and mm-hmm. our families be able to hang out and, and us go to church together, you know, uh, and serve mm-hmm. together in, yeah. in capacities. Yeah, I think it's... Um I think it's almost awkward to, to a lot of other people, um, but probably outside of just God in general, you know, leading leading that and, and being in the forefront of that to make sure that we stayed right. I think just being able to communicate. Yeah. I mean, you and I have had yeah. some pretty hard hard we have communication, hard yeah. hard talks. But I think just being able to do that um, has got us to the place where we are today, where we can still now laugh, cut up, joke, and and move on. I mean, I've. I've come up to you and said some jokes that only you and I would understand, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, you know, but we have that relationship now. And, and I think that, you know, for, for the boys, you know, for Barrett and, yeah. and Foffy, I think it's a, it's a must. Yeah. And, and you, it takes work, guys, any, any, any relationship, you know, your sure. wife, your, your friends, uh, coworkers, whatever. It, you know, all of them take a little bit of work, so you got to do it. Well, and I think, you know, speaking to that dynamic, you know, it's easy, I think, for people to just go, oh, well, you know, this person did what they did and, and they're out of my life and I'm shutting them off and I'm going to go do my own thing or whatever. And, you know, through series of events that happen, and we'll get into this in a minute, um, like I'm talking about like with you and Tracy and, and, you know, we were able to have Tracy on the podcast and mm-hmm. she was able to kind of tell y'all story. A very, I mean, she, the, the way that she talked about things, I'm glad that you can come on the podcast and kind of straighten and, up the record and set a little the record bit. straight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure her was a little bit more dramatic. It definitely <laughs> a little was. more entertaining. It definitely was. And she was mm-hmm. right a lot you know, in her podcast. She, she has that way of working, wording words. <laughs> yeah. But, but the crazy thing is to, and we were talking about this the other day. Um, I think anybody that knows Tracy knows that she is for sure headstrong, Mm -hmm. opinionated, all those things. But what people a lot of times don't know about you is that you are equally, if not more so, opinionated, hard-headed. And and to me, the the cool thing is is to see the dynamic between you guys um, has been refreshing to me because... Y'all compliment each other like in so many ways, you know. We do. Uh, and, and again, if if people just met you, they'd be like, "Oh, he's the quiet one mm-hmm. that that doesn't say a whole lot." And I'm like, "Yeah, but when he does say <laughs> something, trust me, it's it's going to count." So it's kind of like when I was raising, you know, all, all my kids. At this point, uh, my my one of my mottos was, "I just have to be more hard headed than them." Yeah, and yeah. you know, I've used it in my marriage too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it it's obviously working for you guys. You know, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, I, I know that you and I have a history, but you, you talk a little bit about, um, I remember when uh, you did come stay with us mm-hmm. during, during that time. And, you know, I, I talked about this a lot on the podcast of how, you know, I went through a span of time when you know drugs alcohol i mean i I faced a lot of these things and made a lot of poor decisions in my early 20s that you know i'm glad for the lessons that i learned but at the same time it's like man i kind of wish i could go back and and not make those mistakes Mm -hmm. but i am the person that i am today because of the mistakes that i made and the lessons that i learned um during that time and i wanted you to share a little bit about what you went through because first of all it was later in life which mm-hmm. was interesting to me you had gone kind of like your whole life with without ever doing drugs mm-hmm. whatsoever mm-hmm. and i mean alcohol i think a lot of people you know growing up you get to that 17 18 year old age and you want to try something you want to you know step out there and and you're mm-hmm. curious about things but I want you to tell a little bit about how all that happened and maybe some things that happened in your life during that point. <clears throat> so it's a very long story, uh, but to make it, you know, somewhat, con- the readers digest yeah, somewhat, version. somewhat condensed, uh, it's when I went through my divorce. Um, I, I was, uh, you know, went from being married and, and with a child and at that point a step stepdaughter, uh, you know, fully, fully immersed in being a husband and, and a father and married to being single. Yeah. And I, I just remember I would just lay, lay in bed 
and I couldn't sleep. I just stared at the ceiling, stared at the wall. I mean, for hours. I wouldn't sleep. Now, did that have anything to do with the 56 energy drinks you had drank before that? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe. Anybody that maybe. knows Mike knows that energy drinks, coffee, that was one of our bonding yeah. points. So, sorry, I, I interrupted you. Yes, I can remember when you were a baby, I introduced you to Starbucks <laughs> and, 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 you know, showed you how to become a man. You kind of did get me going with coffee. No joke. Yeah. Like, into this very day, I don't miss a day without starting my morning oh, yeah. with coffee. Oh, yeah. No, we, so. we've, we've, we've matured since then. No, so, it, you know, and I've told a lot of people now, right, hindsight's, hindsight's twenty twenty. is, you know, whenever you have a life-changing event like that, you, you come to a T in a road. Yeah. And you're either going to go towards God or you're going to go away from God. Agreed. And and I, I, regretfully at the time, I went away from God. Yeah. And because I'm hard-headed, you know, talking about raising my kids and being stubborn, um, I, I, I had a long, long, dark road ahead of me. Um, and, of course, it didn't start— uh, where I ended. Right. Um, but I was always, uh, up for a party. I was always, um, you know, up to, to try something else and, and, and do something else and keep it going. So, um, I just started going out. Yeah. Um, you know, started, uh, drinking, um, partying, um, going, you know, going to clubs and, and playing poker. I mean, just anything that would keep me awake until I would be so exhausted, I'd fall asleep. Um, yeah. which usually ended at about three in the morning Yeah, and I'd have to get up and go to work the next day. Yeah. And I would do it pretty much every day. I didn't have Ethan. Um, and, and I did several years of that and eventually, you know, was enough. Yeah. It just progressed into, into so much more. I don't know how much you want me to go into it, but. Well, um, I mean, I, you know, I, I've, I think you've told me you'd listen to the podcast where I kind of share my story, but I, I went into a lot of things because it for me it was a progression you know for me it was like you know i i drank actually at an early age like the first time i drank i was 11 and so which is man that's so young mm -hmm. like when i look at barrett right now as 11 years old yeah. i'm like what in the world and and i think one of the things for me was i hung out with kids that were older than me mm -hmm. so kids that were 15 and 16 like they were in a totally different phase of life than I was in. Mm -hmm. It's not that maybe I was even interested in that, but because I was hanging out with them, it's like my, their interest became my interest. And I would, I've said this many times to parents, I would encourage you to keep your kids around kids that are the same age, because, you know, 12 years old around a 16, 17 year old, they're going through a whole different thing mm -hmm. than a 12 year old's going through at that time. Oh yeah. Um, and so, like, for me, it was, you know, I smoked weed. Then, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I remember I got into cocaine for a little bit. I did, you know, meth uh, a bunch of times. I, you know, thankfully didn't get heavy into that. My, I ended up kind of settling in, uh, you know, uh, pharmaceutical drugs. So, like, painkillers mm -hmm. and, and muscle relaxers and you know, uh, bars at that time and, mm -hmm. and Xanax and stuff. But, but mine, uh, so, so th this speaks to our personalities, I think, because mine was, I, my mind is like a thousand miles an hour all the time. So for me, my escape was like, I want to get to a place where I don't even know what's happening. Like it was just mm -hmm. numbing mm -hmm. for me, for you. It was the opposite. It was like, mm -hmm. I got to stay up. I got to keep this thing going. It was yeah. kind of like the whole energy drink th thing times. Time, times a know. thousand. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was the one that wanted to be the life of the party and, and push it to the next degree and the yeah. next level. And part of it being, you know, raised in church and around so many people my whole life, I was used to big crowds. I was used to, right. um, you know, being a leader of sorts. And so I, I played that to, to those strengths of mine. Um, yeah. Regretfully, it, it took me further down a path than what I wanted to go. Um, so during all that, I, I had an opportunity to switch careers. You know, of course, at that point, my whole life is an upheaval. And so to me, that was like, okay, this is a new beginning. Now, is um, this when you were, because I remember you were managing... Uh, a wings place or something. So this is right before then. This is this is okay. this is okay. leading up to that. Okay. Um, I, I started uh, working at a restaurant. I had a friend who owned one, yeah. and um, he he was like, "Hey, look, I, I can't really pay you a whole bunch, but I can show you everything you need to know." 
And so I was like, man, that, that's always been a dream of and mine. And you guys are still friends, right? We're still yeah, friends this yeah, day. I've yeah. actually was able to, and, and he would speak to this, I, I was actually able to help him uh, through through some drug issues and stuff, and, and he came and stayed with me for a little bit. And I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to do that had I not went through right. what I went through. Right. I mean, I right. it was it was a huge deal. It was For me, it was actually a really big eye-opener on, you know, man, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, thank yeah. you for bringing me out. Yeah. Um, and thank you for allowing me to be able to, to really relate and really help, which as a, as a kid growing up in church, I wouldn't have been able to do. Right. I just wouldn't have. So, well, well the, you, you would not have, I mean, it's, it's different when you can sit down with somebody and go, I know where you're, where you are. And that's one of the things that I've seen a lot with my own life. Uh, I've been able to sit down with people and go, okay, I know what it's like to go through withdrawal. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like to take money from people that mm-hmm. you love and spend it you know, just to keep your habit mm-hmm. going and stuff like that, or to keep the party going or whatever you want to call it. I, I know what those things are like. So for you to be able to sit down and help somebody else, you know, not only does it make you feel even more grateful, but you're also mm-hmm. able to relate when mm-hmm. you couldn't relate it otherwise, you know, I, there's, I, there's no, way. no way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would not, I was, I mean, right. For all practical purposes, I was pretty sheltered. Yeah. And so uh, you know, having in dealt with all that, I was able to really help on a different level. Yeah. Really cool. So, um, start working at restaurants, um, still partying, um, still going out at this point, it's mainly, um, drinking a yeah. little bit of, uh, you know, we just every now and then I never really liked it. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, it was just more, you well, know, knowing you, I could see you not liking it. I mean, yeah, you didn't like it. Uh, you know, cigarettes every now and then, but again, didn't like those either. Well, uh, then it progressed to I, I started managing a, a much bigger uh, restaurant and bar, yeah. and which gave me more access to more alcohol, yeah. uh, more access to more. Let's take it for what it is: more women. Yeah. Um, you know, on a completely different scale. Yeah. Uh, at that point, that that restaurant had a seating capacity of like nine hundred. I mean, we yeah. had live music. I remember on the we actually went and ate there. Did you? One time, right? The Wings Place. Is mm-hmm. that what you're talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah. yeah, it was out outside of Dallas or yeah, something. Was it in, uh, yeah, south yeah, of Dallas. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember. And so that's really, I think, where I went from, you know, walking down this wrong path away from God to, yeah. to, to running, you know, yeah. jumping on a crotch rocket and just hitting it, you yeah. know, doing a wheelie down. And Which you had a crotch rocket at that time, didn't Yeah, you? at some point in there I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, it just went, it, it spiraled pretty quick for the most part. I mean, I was in in from a, from a world standpoint, I was, I was living the life. Right. Um, you know, I was doing what I had always wanted to do. I was managing a restaurant. I had went and opened up a restaurant for the same, uh, uh group yeah. and, you know, was basically partying on the weekends, partying when I worked. Uh, I mean, I can remember just, you know, lining up shots down the bar and just drinking them or yeah. buying shots for cute girls. And, you know, yeah. just cause I yeah. could, yeah. Uh, whole nine yards. Well, that, that, that scene, um, opening me up to basically to meth. Yeah. Um, I had a, a saying, and again, guys, this is this is pre Jesus. Uh, that you know, Coke was for kids. Right. <laughs> because right. I, I I just didn't do it. I I went straight to the hard stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I I got to a point where, and this is where it gets real. I got to a point where I was doing five to six hundred dollars a week in meth. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's, that's a crazy. Lot. That's that's a lot. I, I got to the point where I was because I. Although I was doing drugs and that part was dumb, I wasn't a dummy. Right. And I thought, well, man, if I buy a bigger quantity, yeah. I can yeah. sell it. Yeah. And then I can do mine for free. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, you're, you're a druggie. Yeah. That makes sense. And so I, I got to, to that point and, and, and then it just really, uh, I mean, I was the absolute world's worst drug dealer in the history of mankind. Yeah. I mean, the world's worst. Um, but it, it got to the point where, uh, literally, all I did was was I partied, I, I did drugs, and I had sex. That's what I did. Yeah. Um. And and that lasted for for a while, probably about a year and a half at that point in my life. Yeah. Uh, the flip side to that, you know, the Pastor Macy always says, you know, sin is fun for a season. Right. Uh, but then the reality checks in because the right. devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. There's no other plan right. for your life from him. Right. Except for those things. Right. And so, I mean, I ended up homeless, carless cell phoneless, jobless. At that point I was kidless. Yeah. Uh, at that point, my ex-wife had moved to Hawaii yeah. with Ethan. I went like almost a year without seeing him. Uh, and you know, although you, I missed him, 
that wasn't my main focus in right, life. Right. My main focus right. was drugs. Right. And so. Well, and, and let me say this. When you, because, you know, you and I have talked about this many times, but when you get in that mindset and you're pursuing those things, it becomes, everything becomes a selfish pursuit. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I can remember, uh, you know, coming down to visit. We couldn't see you because mm -hmm. you would be out. You'd be gone. Yeah. I remember one time I saw you, you literally popped in for like, 10 minutes you were out and I remember seeing you going cause I knew, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. cause I had been there. Yeah. And when I saw you, I was like, you were super skinny. Mm -hmm. I mean, super skinny, like scary skinny. I'm not now. <laughs> well, well <laughs> you're healthier now than you were then. Um, <laughs> but I mean, no, you were like super mm -hmm. skinny. And, and when I saw you, like I was blown away cause it hadn't been long. Mm -hmm. until I had seen you before and like the how far down you had gone in that amount of time and mm -hmm. it was like even for me it was like oh man like okay mm -hmm. Mike's not doing good and and you know the 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 other thing too at that point Mike and you know this is that you think that you look fine to everybody else you know you're mm -hmm. like oh, I'm keeping up the facade I got it going oh, yeah. you know I'm popping here mm -hmm. you know I got a lot of stuff going on and I remember when I saw you're like hey B you know hugging me and all this <laughs> stuff and I'm like okay like I, I know he thinks everything's <laughs> good right now yeah but but I I could tell that that you were on that path mm -hmm. and it's amazing when it sucks you in to that how quickly people mm -hmm. I think people don't understand this when you say you did that for a year and a half, that's like mm -hmm. four years in real time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for real, when you're when you're oh, in yeah. the fast lane mm -hmm. like that, and you're living that kind of life, like the amount of life that can be lived in that amount of time, and how far you can go down, mm -hmm. is unbelievable. Oh, like right, it doesn't yeah. take twenty years mm -hmm. to destroy your life. You can destroy your life like that. Oh yeah. When when you're on that track. Yeah, I mean, mine was mine was pretty quick. It was it was extremely rapid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but, you know, I, I remember my mom said this one time and my parents, you know, prayed for me when, when I was in the same type of situation. And I remember them saying, you know, we, we knew that you had to get to rock bottom before mm -hmm. you would figure out, Hey, I, I don't want this life. And they were like, we never prayed for bad things for you to happen. Cause I do believe that God has better ways than maiming you. Okay. Now, sometimes, you know, it takes things to get your attention. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell some of those things that I know happened to you here in a moment. But one of the things that they said is we prayed that you would get to the bottom quickly, mm -hmm. that, that as little damage could be done that was done. And in the thing that I got on the podcast, I talked about this and the six times that I went to jail, I don't have a felony. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was like, even though bad things happened, I look at it and go, it could have been way worse, Oh yeah. but it was enough for me to be shaken out of the situation that I was in. And like, man, I don't mm -hmm. want to end up like these people. You oh, know? absolutely. You know? Yeah. That's um, not, not to, to jump too far ahead, but that was literally my, my first wake up call. Yeah. Uh, I can remember uh, extremely vividly. I was, um, at this point, again, I was at the lowest of the low. Right. I still wasn't uh, planning on changing anything or, you know, right. doing right. anything for the for good or for God at that point. But we were just there with a bunch of guys, um, you know, other drug heads and drug dealers, you know, kind of in that little group. Sure. And uh, we were all sitting there just hanging out. And a group of girls walked up. And this is going to be extremely vivid, but it just it's, it's just part of the story um, for me. A group of girls walked up and, you know, it was uh, in that world, not in the normal world. <laughs> it was the typical, you know, what can I do for you yeah. to get some drugs? Right. Um, you know, uh, and, and I what shook me to my core was one of them was pregnant. I remember you telling me that and story. I, I, I literally, you know, you got this 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 woman with a, a baby inside of her, a live baby, live baby, and she's throwing herself at me to get something. Yeah. And I, I, I literally got sick to my stomach. I mean, vomiting sick. Yeah. And I can remember thinking, I'm better than this. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was better at that particular moment, 
but it was yeah. more for me. It was I was raised better than this. Like yeah. this is not the life for me. This is a, at that point it was very real that this was a whole different world out there right. that I had immersed myself in, and I literally got up, physically got up, <laughs> left, <laughs> walked because I didn't have a car. And I had a friend who owned a restaurant that wasn't super far away. It wasn't walking distance, obviously. Yeah. And uh, I, w- I walked walked there, and I, he wasn't there, but one of the managers was there, and I just said, hey, can I borrow your phone? And uh, I used the phone, called my mom and dad, and I said, hey, can I come home? And, yeah. you know, that was a real hard phone call because I had already done them so wrong, right. um, you know, over that last, you know, while. And But I knew I, I, knew I needed a break. Yeah. I knew I needed something to change. And so uh, my mom and dad were actually here. They, they were actually with you uh, eating dinner or lunch or, dinner oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, and, I think uh, I remember that. Yeah, they got the phone call. Uh, uh, kind of a side note, they were actually also with, uh, I think Tracy was there, uh, my wife now. Yeah. And so make long story short, my sister came and got me, my other sister Becky and her husband, and uh, took me to their house. And there I just kind of started to detox, right? I was, I was starting to come off. So I was uh, pretty antsy, pretty volatile in the sense of, I mean, I was still me, but yeah. on a different level. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I got through that, and then I thought, you know what? I need a break. I, I'm going to go see Jax. And that's what, that's what brought me here. Yeah. And I'm going to go see, you know, see Baby Barrett and, and hang out with him. And, and again, I just needed a break. Yeah. I wasn't planning on quitting anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I knew I needed, I knew I needed a break. Uh, I knew I was not in, in the right right place, and um, so that's what happened. Yeah, I, I got here, uh, you know, stayed with y'all for a little bit. Uh, in that time frame, I uh, met Tracy just you know just in, in coming to church, and uh, your mom and dad. I mean, they played a huge role in in really you know loving me because at that point I was at my lowest. Yeah, I mean, I literally had nothing, and and, and you and Jacks you know, allowed me to come stay with y'all and, and really just played a huge part. And man, I can remember within, you know, five, four or five, six weeks of being here, just, just being back around, you know, God fearing, God loving that kind of world, Yeah, you know, that I, I I will never run from again. Right. I can remember uh, being here at Rollwood in a service and literally I, I mean, there's no other other way to describe it other than a lightning bolt hit me, and I mean, I I literally God picked me up, turned me a 180, and set me back down. Yeah. And my life's never been the same same since. I, I mean, haven't touched drugs, haven't um, you know touched a lick of alcohol. I mean, the whole nine yards from from what I was. Yeah. You know, and I and I was committed to it. I mean, I was in it 110. percent I was I was yeah. I was in a party mode, and to God to have God do that for me. I mean, I, I'm, I tell him all the time when I'm praying, God, I'm eternally grateful. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, he is my savior. I know to, to other people, he may be certain things to me. Yeah. He's my savior. Yeah. I well, mean, he, he, he turned my life around. You know, I, I literally said this Sunday and, you know, we had an amazing service on Sunday, but I literally said this Sunday when I was praying, I said, God, I'll never forget mm-hmm. because, you know, when you've been through those situations, when you've been all alone, when you've been laying there in bed at night, can't sleep, you know, you feel God speaking to you, but, but you have this urge to go and push through to this other life. I mean, you know, my deal was I was hard headed too. And so my deal was, is it's like, I'm gonna live this way. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care how many bad things happen. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, and, and I saw mm-hmm. you in that same spot, mm-hmm. you know, and I tell people all the time, nothing you say is going to turn somebody at that moment. Mm-hmm. I, you know, even though I think you had respect for me, or I, I mean, I know you had respect mm-hmm. for me and I had respect for you. I wouldn't have been able to say, Hey Mike, uh, you need to stop right now, man. I mean, mm-hmm. you just said, don't worry about me. I got it. I got it be you just you know you know yeah. I'm living the life right now. Oh yeah. And and the thing is is that I think a lot of times family members feel like well if I could just tell them this or if I could just say this. Mm. It is a god thing for someone to get turned around from being in that mindset and lifestyle. It so envelops you mm-hmm. that 
everywhere you turn, it's there. Every you know, you create a whole new uh, friends. You know, you mm-hmm. you got a whole new group of friends. You got a whole new group of activities that you're doing. Everything in your life has changed. And I know for me, I would wake up in the morning and I was thinking, how am I going to do this today? You know, mm-hmm. how's this going to look like? I woke up thinking about it. I passed out or fell asleep or whatever thinking about it, it was mm-hmm. that was my life. And, you know, I remember, man, it was wrecked cars. It was, you know, you started a restaurant mm-hmm. at one time that, you know, mm-hmm. I had real hopes that would have been awesome. But, you know, your life yeah, didn't allow been. it to be. My, my drug habit didn't. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the uh, the short and long of it. Yeah. And so, you know, I look at people, though, there are people out there. Mike, and, and you probably are still maybe know some of these people that you see them and they've been doing this for 20 years, man, and cannot mm-hmm. seem to get out of it. And when I look at people like myself, people like you, that God literally plucked us out of these situations and there's no way we would have come out of it otherwise. No, you know? I, I, absolutely not. I mean, it literally, you should be dead. I should be dead. I, I should be dead. And, and you know, uh, with a lot more trouble in my life. Yeah. And uh, I, it literally took me, you know, basically surrendering to God. Yeah. I mean, as powerful and, you know, all, almighty as he is, he, he waited on me and, until I said, okay, God, I'm done. You know, yeah. literally lifting up my hands and, and that's all he was waiting for. Yeah. Um, and and to one, to, for me, probably one of my biggest, uh, or I say, I should say God's biggest testimony in my life is the fact that when people look at me now, they don't see someone who did, you know, five, six hundred dollars right. a week worth of meth where when you see those type of people, you know them. Oh, yeah. You know, they, yeah, they have absolutely tweaks or, you know, no teeth or whatever it may be. But, you know, you know, yeah. they've, they've had a hard life, yeah. as, as I would say. Um, and when people look at me, they don't see that. And to me, that's that's probably God's biggest testimony in my life is, you know, when people see that, they don't see that. When they see me, they don't see that. Well, and you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the three Hebrew boys that were thrown in the fiery furnace, right? They go through the furnace. Those of you that know the story know what I'm talking about, but they go through the furnace. The Bible says that when they came out of the fire, that they didn't even smell like smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, when God does something in your life, there's no residue there. There's no Mm -hmm. leftover this. There's no leftover that. When God takes you out of that, and I mean, you know, I even knowing that, you know, you telling your story, it's like I have to go back and remember that other guy. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to remember you like that. It's hard for me to remember myself like that. Mm-hmm. Like when I mm-hmm. got on the podcast recently and told my story uh, with the Menezobles and we were talking about all the things and I ended up telling things that I was like, I did that. Like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't even seem like it's my past. It seems mm-hmm. like I'm telling a story of someone else's past. But that's how it is when God pulls you out of a situation. It's it's mm-hmm. it's the cleanest break it can be, man. It's it just is. It, 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 he pulls you it out. Is. No, he he really did. I mean, I I never even wanted to do drugs again, you know, yeah. or have a, another drink. And and when I drank, I drank. I drank hard. I didn't you know yeah. drink a beer or two. I mean, I drank you know hard stuff and. To, to for God to completely take that away that desire. Yeah. Now I say that on the flip side, there was some aspects of my life that this may sound funny, but he left in place. Yeah. And and I you know at the time I was kind of like man that's kind of weird like just yeah. take it all from me God I want to yeah. be completely clean. Yeah. And looking back at it now and, and over the last you know several years, I realized that there was some things that God wanted me to need Him for. Absolutely. And, and so, you know, I learned like, hey, I got an accountability partner and, mm-hmm. and, and I've, I've kept one, you know, this whole time just because I need to keep myself accountable. Yeah. And, and what's really cool is I've, when I help other people, it's something that's really cemented to me right. to, to really relate to them. Right. Hey guys, you're going to need this. You're yeah. going to need this with your walk with God. And it's, you know, it's not that, um, you know, I'm failing with that one, but it's just something else that God's put in my life as a check. Yeah, And it's really helped me uh, stay grounded. I just told somebody last week that when I, when I look at my life and I go back, you know, to mistakes that I made, the number one reason for those mistakes was no accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to a place where I felt like 
I was good enough to handle things on my own. Mm-hmm. And what I quickly realized, you know, the Bible says pride cometh before a fall and a haughty spirit before uh, destruction. I think, you know, we always look at that like, we. I think we read that scripture and think about pride in a different way. But sometimes pride is just the fact that you feel you can do it alone. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's what pride is. A lot of times, that's yeah. what a haughty spirit is. Is when you go, no, no, no. I, I'm I'm good. You know, I like like I, I'm in a I'm in a leadership position, mm-hmm. which I was at a time mm-hmm. in my life mm-hmm. when I fell the hardest, and it was like I felt this. Uh, and, it, and it wasn't a feeling of like, I'm better than it wasn't that it was just like, a, I can handle this on my own. Mm-hmm. And if I could tell anybody something is, is first of all, you got to have two things. If you're going to be successful in your life, walking with God, you have to have accountability and you have to have discipline. And, and a lot, mm-hmm. I think those things often go hand in hand. Right. So it's not money and good looks? <laughs> it's not, oh, okay. Even though okay. you already have those, I mean, I mean, I, I, I everybody either, can't be as good looking <laughs> as you are. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I'm saying you got to have those two things. And when I go back to my life where I failed, it's when I didn't have accountability. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it has nothing to do with, I mean, the Bible says when I'm weak, then I'm strong, right? It's like mm-hmm. when you realize man, I can't do this on my own. I got to have him every day. I need him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need him. It's Mm -hmm. not just I want this. I I need him. It's when you get to that place is when you can be successful in your walk with God, for sure. That's that's very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's hard for people. It's hard for people. You know, somebody told me here a while back, hey, thank you for so how transparent you are on the podcast. And I said, well, look, I'm transparent because I need to be. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't need to hold these things back. Like I Mm. need to go, Hey, I've struggled with this. Hey, I've had issues Mm. with this. Hey, here's where I failed in my life. Because as soon as I stop talking about that, Mm -hmm. it's like, I'll get to that point again where I'm like, no, I'm good. You know? And, and and there is no good in me. (laughs) I'm just telling you, you know, (laughs) there's not. And I mean, it was, you know, even the apostle said that there's no good in me. Mm -hmm. There, there's not there, there is. And I pray this all the time. I'm like, God, you know, you know how weak this guy is. <laughs> like, I need your strength. It's not about how strong yeah. I am. It's about how strong you are through me. Yeah, it's a, it's a daily, daily thing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know we could go on and, like, tell the success story in your life of, you know, you and Tracy getting together. I, I, I think, you know, we talked to her about this, but you guys blended families. Mm-hmm. The way that's worked has been amazing. You know, the things that you yes. guys have done from, you know, friends that you've helped, uh, people that, I mean, you guys are constantly having people over and like reaching out to people all the time. And you can tell that this is something with you and Tracy both that's just your heartbeat, like, like true ministry, in mm-hmm. my opinion, where it is, hey, we're having people over to eat and we're mm-hmm. breaking bread with people and hanging out with people and just being a friend to people. I think a lot of times as Christians, we get stuck in this thing of, I got to get you to church, right? Mm-hmm. Like I got to meet somebody with this ulterior motive of yeah. church, 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 church. Why don't you be a friend to somebody? Because you're going to gain a lot more respect mm-hmm. and clout with somebody by just being friendly than going, I'm going to talk to this person because I can't wait to get them to church. Mm-hmm. You know? No, I, I, I think that's huge. I mean, you can't, you can't be a Prieto and and not think that, you know, <laughs> not true. live that life. I mean, that's you can't true. be raised by my parents yeah. and, and not live and the way I do, right? And not, and, yeah, and that, yeah. not do it. And, um, I mean, that's, that's, to me, that's the, the main thing. And, and people, people aren't going to respect you or listen to you until they first know that you love them and yeah. know that you care about them. Yeah. And, you know, I have I've, some of my, my best friends, um, aren't in church and I don't say that you know, to, to scare anybody, but you know, I've got a brother-in-law who I'm really close to and he's not in church. I've got uh, David Campbell who I'm extremely close to and he's not in church, but yet to me, that's where it starts. Right. Um, right. it starts by, you know, just letting people know, Hey, I'm there for you. Right. And, and eventually God will open that door. Yeah. I mean, to me, you're right. I don't, I don't, although there are special occasions, you know, like, Hey, come to this and come to that, you know, backpack giveaway or, or other things right, that, right. that role was so, so good about that make it easy to invite people. Right. There are just times where people just need to come to your house. 
yeah. take off their shoes and sit in your recliner and just hang out. Yeah. And and I I'm I'm yeah, I'm a huge believer in that and I I think I live that life. I mean, it's it's a must. Well, and and again, anybody that knows your family knows that your mom has asked them over for dinner at some point. She's definitely cooked food for them and yep. made them take food home and, and all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, there, there's no doubt there's been many, many, many meals that I have with your family that it'd be like, hey, we're going to invite this guy and we're going to have this person and oh, this yeah. person's going to come over and they're living with us right now. And it's like every time I would go over there, it would be another person would be living there. Somebody from, you know, oh, yeah. Italy would be there mm-hmm. for a little while or whatever it was. But they definitely love people, and that's one of the things that you for sure gotten from your mom and your dad, no doubt. Absolutely. And, and Tracy does that too. I mean, it's just a party over at the Prieto home all the time. We are a good blend. <laughs> <laughs> we we are. We, she she definitely compliments me, and and uh, she accentuates it. You know, she makes yeah. it. She makes me better, and, and makes the 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 life uh, better. She never gives me a hard time. Yeah. Because I'm always about inviting someone else over, or someone's yeah. coming over for dinner, and. Uh, you know, she doesn't give me a hard time or she ropes me into things too, though. Yeah. Oh, Believe I know she not, does. She ropes me in, into things does. too, you know, but to me, that's, you know, that's part of that relationship. So, yeah. Well, man, seriously, I want to thank you for sharing this, first of all, because I know, you know, sometimes sharing these things, sometimes it's hurtful. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Sometimes it's, it's, but the, the, the cool thing is, is that I think we can really help people by sharing testimony and and saying hey look this is where i was but this is where i am now i I say this all the time on the podcast like my favorite thing to say we'll never know what god can do if we don't talk about what he's done Mm -hmm. and so we have to be able to say god's changed my life in this you know in this aspect or god's turned me around from this and uh i appreciate you taking the time to do that i want to tell you publicly i know i tell you this privately but i love you i appreciate your friendship and I always feel like that you're just a phone call away. Like if I ever need anything, I can pick up the phone and call you. And I really appreciate that. Well, that's, that's a fact. I I know it is. And I speak for, you know, for me, my wife, my kids, I mean, your uncle B, we love you. And it's, you know, I, there's been some uphill battles with, with, you know, holding that ground. Sure. Uh, But uh, it's just the way we feel and and it's not going to change. So. Well, I appreciate that. And again, I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning into the podcast. Remember, we drop a podcast every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. You can check that out through iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. You can check us out on uh, the Royal Wood Church YouTube channel. You can check that out on Roku TV. We're everywhere is what I'm saying. So make sure that you tune in, share this with somebody, hit the subscribe button below, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank you everybody for tuning in to another episode of DRW. We appreciate you guys tuning in every week, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. If you want to see video content for this podcast, make sure that you go to Royalwood Church on YouTube. That's right below. Make sure that you click on the bell so you can be notified for new content. Also, you want to follow us on Instagram at DRW Podcast underscore, Facebook at DRW Podcast, and then brand new we've got the roku our roku channel where you can check out the podcast and also apple tv make sure that you tune in every week like and share this with someone that you think it would be a blessing to and we'll see you soon